A consideration of the pathology of cholera is capable of indicating to us the manner in which the disease is communicated. If it were ushered in by fever or any other general constitutional disorder, then we should be furnished with no clue to the way in which the morbid poison enters the system, whether, for instance, by the alimentary canal, by the lungs, or in some other manner, but should be left to determine this point by circumstances unconnected with the pathology of the disease. But from all that I have been able to learn of cholera, both from my own observations and the descriptions of others, I conclude that cholera invariably commences with the affection of the alimentary canal. The disease often proceeds with so little feeling of general illness that the patient does not consider himself in danger or even apply for advice till the malady is far advanced. Diseases which are communicated from person to person are caused by some material which passes from the sick to the healthy, and which has the property of increasing and multiplying in the systems of the persons it attacks. In syphilis, smallpox, and vaccinia, we have physical proof of the increase of the morbid material, and in other communicable diseases. The evidence of this increase derived from the fact of their extension is equally conclusive. As cholera commences with an affection of the alimentary canal, and as we have seen that the blood is not under the influence of any poison in the early stages of this disease, it follows that the morbid material producing cholera must be introduced into the alimentary canal must in fact be swallowed accidentally. For persons would not take it intentionally. The period which intervenes between the time when a morbid poison enters the system and the commencement of the illness which follows is called the period of incubation. It is in reality a period of reproduction as regards the morbid matter and the disease is due to the crop or progeny resulting from the small quantity of poison first introduced. In cholera, this period of incubation or reproduction is much shorter than in most other epidemic or communicable diseases. From the cases previously detailed, it is shown to be in general only from 24 to 48 hours. It is owing to this shortness of the period of incubation and to the quantity of the morbid poison thrown off in the evacuations that cholera sometimes spreads with a rapidity unknown in other diseases. Deficiency of light is a great obstacle to cleanliness as it prevents dirt from being seen and it must aid very much the contamination of the food with the cholera evacuations. Now, the want of light in some dwellings of the poor in large towns is one of the circumstances that has often been commented on as increasing the prevalence of cholera. It is amongst the poor, where a whole family live, sleep, cook, eat, and wash in a single room that cholera has been found to spread when once introduced and still more in those places termed common lodging houses in which several families were crowded into a single room. When, on the other hand, cholera is introduced into the better kind of houses, as it often is, it hardly ever spreads from one member of the family to another. The constant use of the hand basin and towel, and the fact of the apartments for cooking and eating being distinct from the sick room, are the cause of this. The great prevalence of cholera in institutions for pauper children and pauper lunatics 
whenever it has gained access to these buildings, meets with a satisfactory explanation according to the principles here laid down. Under these circumstances, and when it is remembered that children get their hands into everything and are constantly putting their fingers in their mouths, it is not surprising that the malady spread in this manner. It is not unlikely that some of the cases of cholera which spring up without any apparent connection with previous cases may be communicated through articles of diet. It is the practice of the poor people who gain a living by selling fruit and other articles in the streets to keep their stock in very crowded rooms in which they live. And when visiting the outpatients of a medical charity a few years ago, I often saw baskets of fruit pushed under the beds of the sick patients in close proximity with the chamber utensils. I need hardly say that if the cases of disease were propagated in this way, it would be quite impossible to trace them. If the cholera had no other means of communication than those which we have been considering, it would be constrained to confine itself chiefly to the crowded dwellings of the poor and would be continually liable to die out accidentally in a place for want of the opportunity to reach fresh victims. But there is often a way open for it to extend itself more widely and to reach the well-to-do classes of the community. I allude to the mixture of the cholera evacuations with the water used for drinking and culinary purposes, either by permeating the ground and getting into wells, or by running along channels and sewers into the rivers from which entire towns are sometimes supplied with water. 